Matt, stop her. I'm shooting to kill. Climb back here and keep your hands away from those shooting irons. Keep him covered, men. Looks like your partner gave us a slip. But not for long. Come on, we're riding to town. Well, we got one of them, Ed. That's fine. We'll lock him up. We're redecorating the bridal suite, Corrigan, so you'll have to bunk in here with Red Langdon. Red Langdon? Him? Oh, no. You're not going to get me to put up with that common, ordinary bandit. You may as well get used to it, Corrigan. Because where we're sending you, you're going to have plenty of them for company. I'm leaving our stage robber in your care, Ed. Sleep tight, Corrigan, because in the morning you and I are heading over to the county seat and have a nice little powwow with the judge. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe I wouldn't be too sure of that. <laughs> maybe I won't like the joint. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe I won't like you either. What's the idea of grabbing the best bet? Who do you think you are? Red Lang, and that's who I am. Yeah, well, from now on, you're just pinky to me. Get out of there. Hey. Now go to sleep. class jailbreak. Well, how about taking me with you, Corrigan? No, sir, not this trip. We're traveling light. Yeah, right for the border. I know a place lots closer than the border. Safer, too. We got a good place. Is it any safer or closer than Fugitive Valley? No, and it's not so exclusive either. From what I hear, the whip and his gang aren't anxious for outside company. They'd be plenty anxious for you two, Umbreeze, if you were in the deuce proper. Yeah. But who'll do the introducing? Me. That was the outfit I was riding with when my horse got shut out from under me. You aren't trying to slip something over on us? No, honest. It was just outside of Dead Man's Pass. No peace horse ever rode through there and came back to tell the story. What do you say? I don't know. It's up to you, Corrigan. Well, we'll take a chance. You rustle up another horse and we'll take care of the rest. Stop that gun. Come here. What is this? 
Oh, nothing to get excited about, Jailer. I told you I wouldn't like the joint. What are we going to do with him, Corgan? Oh, uh, we'll give him a nice private room. Get in there. You can't get away with this, Corrigan. If you need anything, just ring. Rest your horses now. No posse will ride any further than this. Fugitive Valley is uh, right ahead through Dead Man's Pass. And in it, the old deserted Mexican army post, where Indians wiped out General Diablo 50 years ago. Dead Man's Pass is the only way you can get in or out. Say, you couldn't find a better place than that to hole in. You gotta hand it to the whip. He's a smart picker. Yeah, I suppose we'll be meeting up with him pretty soon. I hope you fellas didn't come up here expecting to meet the whip. Because there ain't no such fella. That's just a lot of talk. Well, how do you account for those messages he signs and packs up after every job? Easy. Anybody can do that. Besides, did you ever see two messages in the same handwriting? You mean to say there's more than one whip? Sure. It's a good way to throw the blame somewhere else. Yeah, but isn't your boss the... Ah, uh... forget it. Hey! Slick! Stop your shooting! It's Red! Red Langdon! Why, crook my shanks, you old hoot owl. I thought you was in jail. You thought right. I was. Who you got there with you? The two main reasons I ain't in jail now. They helped me break out. You better keep a sharp lookout. Maybe a posse following us. Sidekicks got tired of it, so we traded places with a peace officer. <laughs> Boys, you ought to see these hombres at work. The two of them pulled the neatest jailbreak you ever seen. King, meet the boss. Howdy. Hi. Never thought I'd come to see the day when I'd be shaking hands with the whip. What's he talking about, Langdon? You didn't tell him that... Oh, of course not. I tried to tell him there wasn't any such person. The name's Gray. Forget about the whip. You heard what Red said, there's no such person. This is Corrigan, his partner. That stage rob all them notices have been out for. Hi, howdy. Well, if you're as good as those notices say you are, Corrigan, we can use you. But remember, you're not playing a lone hand anymore. I'm boss here, and what I say goes. Come on, have a drink. No, thanks. There's a little matter of a stage I've been planning to hold up for some time, and that'll have to come first. Listen, Corrigan, when I get ready for you to go out of here and rob a stage, I'll say so. Right now, all you're going to do is have a drink with me. Understand? Sure, but I'm still going to rob that stage this afternoon. There's other hombres in this room that started out being stubborn just like that. Looks like I'll have to teach you a lesson, too. Pull off your guns. This is all we need to prove who's boss of Fugitive Valley. Well, if you insist, just as long as it's a fair fight. Don't worry about that. Stand back, everybody. After you, Mr. Corrigan, you swing first. Oh, no, after you, Mr. Gray, you swing first. Just got yourself a new boss, partner. Would you like to shake on that Corrigan? Yeah, sure. 
But how about that stage? You shake on that too, huh? I don't see why we can't now. As a matter of fact, I don't think it'd be a bad idea if Red and I went along. Maybe this pal of yours ought to be in on it too. We want to see if you two can show us something new or not. Well, if we don't, you can always say you came along just for the ride. Well, it looks like we're just in time. Stay here and keep out of sight and follow me later. Driver. What's all the confusion? If this is somebody's idea of a practical joke, I warn you it's going to go hard with the culprit. Keep that driver covered and tell that dude to get out of the way if he don't want to get crowded with this iron box. Look out below. Young man. Your strong arm tactics with that strong box does not frighten me. Look out. I hope your attack of dropsy is all over. Well, I reckon it is, fella. Fine. Then we can proceed to El Paso. Drive on, my good coachman. We may yet make the evening performance. The show must go on. Oh, hold your horses there. What do you got in there? Oh, just my pigeons and paraphernalia. I must hasten. You can go just as soon as you turn over your valuables, and you'll get there a lot sooner if you travel light. Why, you, you bandy-legged bandits, I'll have the law down on you for this. I know my constitutional rights. You heard what he said. Now start unloading. We'll start with that pin. Unbutton your coat. Come on, make it snappy. And that ticker. Hurry up. Now let's see the color of some greenbacks. Why, the color, my good man, is green. What do you think they were, red? What else you got? Say, Professor, how'd you do that? My good man, you are now in the presence of Hamill the Great, a master of magic and the ventriloquial marvel of the age. Ventriloquism, my friends, known to the common herd as voice throwing. Hello, how are you? You see, my friend, you're in the company of a great artist. Now, if you really want to see something, I have here a little magic pocketbook. There you are, my friend. Well, where'd you get all them things from, stranger? From the thin air. And now, gentlemen, one of the greatest mysteries of all time. Production of livestock. Getting a hair from a man's chest. Well, what do you think of that? Hocus Pocus. Shadrach. Beelzebub. Upsy daisy. Presto changeo. E pluribus unum. And back into thin air from whence it came. That's all, gentlemen. If you wish to see the rest of the act, come to the Cactus Theater in El Paso. I'm opening there tonight. We hate to disappoint the folks in El Paso, Professor. But we fellas don't get to the theater much. That's a good idea, boss. Say, now we can have some entertainment up in Fugitive Valley. Get your stuff, Red. I can't accept any more offers. I'm all booked up. I got a contract. I'm opening in El Paso tonight. Now you're opening up tonight, but it won't be in El Paso. You have a very strong argument, gentlemen. 
Now look what I went and done. Pauline was my head performing pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, start unloading it. Yeah. Unless something went wrong, we should have heard before this. Wait, here she comes now. Oh. Now, middle, we've got something that'll work. Everything going as planned. Signed, Range Busters. Well, we've at least outsmarted the whip. Enough to sift peace officers into Fugitive Valley. Well, they didn't disappoint us. Sure must have been fancy stage robbing Corrigan showed you, boss. Well, it wasn't much to speak of in the strong box, but we sure got enough of other stuff here to take care of it. Go on down and help us unload. Put the stuff in the back room. Now, take it easy. I saw her first. I uh, don't know whether it's you or I, but uh, one of us seems to be attracting a lot of attention. I'm sure it isn't me. Hey, Langdon, you didn't say anything about any women being up here in Fugitive Valley? Huh? Well, right over there. She was standing there just a minute ago. Oh, her. She's one of the handiest hands around here. Not a gunslinger. No. Her line's bandages. She's the doc's assistant. They do the patching up if some of the boys don't dodge bullets fast enough. Open your mouth wider. Stick out your tongue as far as you can. Say ah. Ah. Uh. Close your mouth. Young man, we've got to put you in quarantine. Quarantine? You've got a bad case of actinomycosis. Actinomycosis? As bad as that? Why, Doc, I don't feel that sick. No need to get excited in your condition. Oh, but Doc, I tell you, I don't... The symptoms never lie. The tongue turning purple is a sure sign of actinomycosis. Now, we've got to put you to bed and keep you very quiet. Oh, but Doc, Come look, on. I don't... I just... Oh, say, look, I feel better already. I don't see why you have to dose me with that stuff. Oh, that quit. Oh, that's... Doctor's orders. Drink it. Yes, sir. Um. Oh, say, uh, how long have you been in Fugitive Valley? People don't ask questions here. I believe you're a newcomer. Yes, ma'am. That's got me somewhat puzzled. Puzzled? How? Well, in different ways. Uh, do you know the whip? Why do you ask? What do you know about the whip? 
Well, on the outside, this is supposed to be stamping ground, but up here, nobody seems to know anything about him. You're a stage robber, aren't you? Well, yes, somewhat after a fashion. Well, then you'd better give your attention to that and forget about the whip. Too much curiosity could be more dangerous than actinomycosis in Fugitive Valley. Yes, I suppose so. And beside, the doctor said to keep you quiet. Good afternoon, Ann. Hello there. Hello. I, um... Suppose you came to see your sick friend. My, huh? My, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, my sick friend. Sure, sure, that's who I came to see. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, how is he? We have him in quarantine. Oh. He has actinomycosis. Oh, golly, golly, actinomic brooches. Oh, gee. The worst kind. Oh, that's, that's awful. That's terrible. Say, uh, you two live together, don't you? Yeah. Do you feel all right? <laughs> Sure, sure. We don't want any epidemic started around here, do we, Doctor? Why, of course not. Sit down, young man. I want to have a look at your tongue. Yeah, but what, what is all this? I Go ahead and have a look if you want to. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm as fit as a fiddle. Go ahead, both of you look. Nothing wrong with my tongue. And take a look at that tongue. Heavens. He's got it, too. Huh? Got, well, got what? Hey, what are you two talking about? Well, there's nothing wrong with my tongue. I feel it, it. It feels all right. Maybe it does, but you should see what it looks like. Here, see for yourself. Oh, I certainly will. Of all the. Oh. Hey, hey, look. Exactly. Yeah, but, but but how could I? Oh. Oh, hey, Doc. Well, I know what it was. Oh, of course, you got it from your friend. Why, sure, I did. Why, you? Oh no, no, that wasn't yes, it, Doc. No, yes. No. Now you just calm down. You go in here and lie down. We'll have you. All fixed up in no time. But I tell you, well, just take it easy. Oh. 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 Poor boy. The pain must be awful. What are you doing here, you copycat? Well, I'm not here under false pretenses, like somebody else I know in this room. Seems like I do all the work and you get all the money. Why don't you show the folks you're not as dumb as you look? I shall disregard that remark, my young fellow. That's no way for a boy your age to talk. Look who's telling me how to talk. <laughs> I know what makes you so sexy. You haven't had your milk. I don't want any milk. Well, you're going to get it anyhow. Well, seems like the can is empty. Guess I'll have to call up the phantom cow. <laughs> I think that the phantom cow has blessed us. There you are, my fine fellow. Now then, uh, here you must take your milk. Here you are, now take your milk. Red, where's them two stage robbers you fetched in? Well, I don't know, boss. I ain't seen them right recent. Ain't they in that room? No, I just looked. Why don't you try the doctor's cabin? I got a notion they've taken quite a shine to that good-looking nurse. <laughs> Much obliged, I will. Come on, Red. What's the matter, boss? Anything wrong? I met Brandon outside the pass. We had quite a session about these newcomers. What's up? He ain't sought me for bringing them in? Well, not especially, but he ain't pleased either. You know how suspicious Brandon is on account of the whip. He wants us to keep an eye on these two and on this pigeon magician. What good is that going to do? Everybody knows there's more than one whip. Maybe, but there's only one that's getting in Brandon's hair rating his stock and such. And knowing Brandon, I wouldn't be surprised if he planted someone here to listen in on what's going on. Let's go see the doctor. How are the two patients? Resting comfortably? A little too comfortably, if you ask me. I think you have a big problem on your hands. They're showing a mighty big interest in you. 
They don't fool me one bit. What do you mean? I'm afraid it wasn't as much of a joke as we thought, Steve. Something more than playing sick behind that silly schoolboy gag. Just why should they question me about the whip? I'm afraid somebody suspects enough to want to find out more. Anne, your father was my best friend. I'm just as anxious as you are to see Brighton and brought to justice. But it's getting too risky. Take what you've managed to get back from your father's fortune and get out of here and make a home for yourself. And let you and the others down that Brandon robbed just as he did me? No, Steve. They stood by me and I'm standing by them. I know how you feel, Ann. But the law is bound to catch up with Brandon sooner or later. What law? The same that he bought and paid for when he took our range and cattle? But things are different now down in Texas. Oh, I don't believe it, Steve. Even if we prove that Brandon was behind Gray and the others, he'd squirm out of it. Men like Brandon make laws. Why should they bother to obey them? Hey, Doc, uh, we're looking for them two newcomers. Have you seen them around? Why, yes. We've had them under temporary quarantine. Quarantine? For what? Well, they showed symptoms of actinomycosis. Actinom... Well, uh, slight symptoms. Possibly something they ate. And I'm quite sure they'll be all right in the morning. Well, now, Doc, you make sure they're all right before you let them go, because, I mean, we don't want to catch them. Those two guys went out of here like a posse was after them. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. And when you get through here, come over to Joe Hill's place. I've got some work to do. Oh, oh that's all, Doc. Well, I mean, I, I... What are you doing here, anyhow? You're a sick man. Oh, I'm getting along all right, Ann. Look, my tongue's a lot better. Well, then, here's a little chore you can do for me. Oh, I'm not, I'm not feeling that good. Of course you are. And all you do is take this and rip it and roll bandages up. Oh, oh. <laughs> How's that? It's fine. Hmm. Think I'm good enough to apply for a steady job? Oh, I don't know. I'm afraid there's not enough money in the treasury to pay you. Oh, I'm not looking for any pay, Ann, because, uh... My little prairie Annie, I'd love to be your pal. I want to hang around you, cause you're just my kind of a gal. You've got my heart all panty and I'm tied up in a knot I don't know how I'll manage till you tell me what is what I've seen the Red River Valley I know the Rio Grande though I've met Jane and Sally I think you're more than <laughs> My little prairie Annie, I'd love to be your child. I'm gonna hang around you, cause you're just my kind of a Sure a noisy place, isn't it? I'm afraid the competition is a little tough, Mr. King. But your, your song was very nice up to a point. Now you better get back to your room. I have to go and help the doctor. I never knew one guy could make so much noise. Hey, where, where are you going? Back to the room. No use of sticking around here any longer, is there? Oh, I guess you're right. Why should we stick around? Well, 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 uh, well, let's go. Okay, let's go. Don't you think you ought to at least have your gun belts on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
yesterday with a bulging saddlebag. When he came back, it was empty. Well, that should mean that he met Brandon and divided some loot. Yeah, and I've an idea that Brandon will be on his way to the bank at El Paso around sunup. Jim, give me my gun and things. yourselves are out ahead. Jim, give me my whip. Here you are. Give me that money back. Compliments of the whip. Now get going. I'll call you to get here again when Gray and his men go on their next raid. Then we'll step in and raid Fugitive Valley itself. Well, Mr. Brandon. I don't think you'll have to worry about the whip or his notes much longer. Well, I wish I could take that information seriously, Warren. But when a bandit's been pestering you for two years, it's... Oh, I know we haven't done much about it. But it's beginning to look like we might be able to clean up Fugitive Valley. Really? How? Well, that's more or less a state secret. Oh, we haven't been as idle as you think. Well, I wish you luck. But I don't think that'll prove matter somehow. I believe it will. Well, that's the trouble with you fellows. You jump at the conclusion that the whip must be in Fugitive Valley. Now, why waste time when you could be looking for him somewhere else? Well, if he isn't there, somebody's trying awfully hard to keep us from finding it out. So hard, in fact, that six of my men have tried it, and not a one of them are alive today. But the whip isn't the only outlaw in Texas. Why does he have to be the one that's keeping you out? Yeah, when we solve that riddle, we look somewhere else. I didn't know you went in for pet pigeons, Warren. Oh, yeah. Ever since I was a boy. Wouldn't be carrying a message, would it? Probably Mrs. Warren wondering what I'd like for dinner. I'll think over what I've been telling you. I will. Oh, Eddie. Yes? Another message from Alibi. Supposing Brandon did see a pigeon flying to the marshal's office. What proves that against the professor? Well, maybe nothing, but it sure looks suspicious. Say, I'm wondering if the marshal's trying to find out when we pull our next raid so he can round us up before we get to the pass. Maybe. 
But how are you going to prove it? Well, that's easy. We'll give out word that it's going to be a raid and then not pull it. In that way, Brandon can have someone handy where the raid's supposed to take place. Then if a posse shows up, we'll know we're right. It's a good idea. Hello, Doctor. Is uh, Ann able to see any visitors yet? Well, I'm sorry, but she's still too ill. Oh. Well, that's, that's too bad. It must be pretty serious for a headache lasting more than 24 hours. Well, uh, anyway, tell her I called, and I hope she'll get better. I'll tell her, and I know that she'll be very pleased. Yes, well, I wish you'd quit worrying about that girl anyway, as long as she's shut up in that room sick in bed. Well, what's puzzling me is how she got in bed. That night I followed her and found her horse. There's no way for her to come back without passing me. Well, maybe she kept on going and came back later. Maybe so. It's great to wake up early in the morning and breathe this western atmosphere and take a look at heaven in the morning when the skies are clear. Riding along at the break of dawn, singing my song to the world. Happiness is everywhere. Even love is in the air while I'm riding, riding at the break of dawn. Riding along at the break of dawn, feeling as fresh as the breeze. Cares are gone as I go on, riding at the break of dawn. Over hill, over range, along that winding way, gazing at the doggies that will round up today. Riding along at the break of dawn, singing my song to the world. The sun smiles down as I go on, riding at the break of dawn, while I'm riding at the break of dawn. How are you? Me? I'm all right. Well, you got rid of that headache, did you? What headache? What are you talking about? Well, you know, the one the doc told me about. The one that's had you in bed the last couple of days. Oh. Oh, that headache. Oh, that's much better, thank you. Mm. Well, I thought you'd remember. Yes, I... What do you mean, thought I'd remember? I... I just thought you'd remember, that's all. I'm afraid that isn't all, Mr. King. It appears to me that you've been doing an awful lot of snooping lately. You and your friend, Mr. Corrigan, pretending to be sick. Pretty obvious, wasn't it? Well, for my part, ma'am, it, it wasn't meant to be otherwise. What about your partner? I suppose he was just being cute, too. Well, I wouldn't know, ma'am. But from what I know of Corrigan, I, I'd say not. Well, what do you mean? Aren't you... Well, no, ma'am. It, uh, it isn't what you think. I wasn't born bad. I, I was on my way to being somebody when I got mixed up with... Well, bad company. Mr. Corrigan? Yes, sir. He was the one. I wasn't no more than a mere lad when he, when he got me to doing wrong. Teach me how to shoot and rob and stuff. But why don't you break away from his evil influence? You could still go straight. Oh, I, I wish that were true, ma'am. I, I sure do. 
But I don't see how I can ever shake off his hold on me. Howdy, ma'am. Say, where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Gray wants to see you. Gray? What's he want to see me for? Well, the rate's set for 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, and he wants to talk to you about it. Oh. I'll take Ann home. So long. Yeah, so long. But not for long. Beautiful day, isn't it? It was. You aren't very sociable today, are you? Why should I be with a stage robber? Oh, now, wait a minute, ma'am. I haven't always been a stage robber. I was on my way to being somebody when I met up with... Bad company, Mr. Corrigan? Uh, yes, ma'am. You took the words right out of my mouth. How'd you know? Oh, something just told me, I guess. It uh, wasn't by any chance Mr. King, was it? Oh, oh, oh no, I wouldn't want to say that. But now that you know, yes, ma'am. It was him that got me to do it wrong. He taught me to rob and shoot a gun and... Oh, I sure wished I could have gotten rid of that coyote. Oh, I, I don't think you should, Mr. Corrigan. You and Mr. King are such a remarkable pair. Well, you're better than twins. But the next time, if you must use the same line, they'll pick the same girl. You might get better results. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, what have I said? I guess I said the wrong thing. They plan a raid on a herd of cattle headed for Mesa Buttes. And Johnson has already left to warn the herders to take a different route. Hey. According to this, the outlaws will leave the valley around sunup. Now, if we leave about the same time, we'll reach the pass after they've gone through it and are well on their way. And only a few of their men that will be left behind on guard. Won't take more than two or three to snipe off the lot of us, the way that pass is formed. Yeah, but that's where the range busters come in. They didn't have room enough here to explain in detail. They plan to take care of the guards before we get there. Yeah, and when we're inside, I don't want to hear any more squawking out of you either. You can call it squawking if you like. I mean what I say. Yeah, and I mean what I say, too, is the trouble with you is you got a streak of yellow in you. Look here, Corrigan. If I was yellow, you'd be rotten in jail by now. Listen here, Gray. I'm going to... Oh. So that's the way you want to settle it, huh? Yeah, that's the way you settle it. Why all the early morning exercise, Corrigan? Oh, he just got high-toned all of a sudden. Claimed that cattle rustling wasn't fitting for a first-rate stage robber. Well, maybe he's right. Anyhow, there wasn't much use arguing about it. There's nobody rustling any cattle today. Well, what, what, well, what do you mean? Well, what's the matter? There's a false report about Beef being headed for Abilene. Well, it seems like he's out cold. Must have a glass jaw. Better drag him out of the way. Dump him in there with the professor. Oh, yeah, sure. I thought you said you were going to hit me easy. Did you work it all right? No. You'll have to get a message off to Warren before he leaves with the posse. Otherwise, they'll ride into sure death at the pass. There isn't going to be any raid. But I thought so. Hurry up and start riding. You don't think they could be up to a trick, do you? I'll go have a look. Hey, Jesus, somebody's coming. Mighty fond of them pigeons, ain't you? Oh, yes, sir. I raised up one of them from the time it was eggs. Mm -hmm. well, what are you doing with this pencil? Teaching them how to write? Oh, no. Uh, the pencil? <laughs> oh, uh, all that pencil's got to do with it is uh, figure out new tricks. Snap out of it. Snap out of it. You know, I wouldn't have had the heart to rouse you this early in the morning, but since you're already awake and so are some of the boys on account of that false alarm, get your stuff there and... Uh, Give us some entertainment. Now? Now. I'll, I'll handle a pigeon for you. All right, my fine fellow. <clears throat> Gentlemen, one of the greatest mysteries is that of the Oriental spirit bottle. You take this bottle and you whistle in it.
professors. Them spirits, how about a little drink? Oh, a drink? All right, my friend, I'll give you a little rye here. Drink hearty, my man. Right over here, I'll give this boy some scotch. It all comes out of the same bottle. <laughs> right here, my friend. Over here, I'll give this gentleman some bourbon. Right out of there. There you are, boy. Yeah, hey, give me some of that rat poison. Rat poison? Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Well, seems to be kind of plugged up. Must be on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, my friend. Well, it's all right, huh? Hey, what's the matter? You got an appointment or something? No, uh, only, uh, King, he's been out quite a while. I reckon I'd better take a look. Oh, don't bother. Red, take that pitcher of water and wake that sleeping beauty up, will you? Gentlemen, we have here a pigeon, which I'm going to place in this little empty box here. And, uh... Who got that pigeon? I want pigeon pie tonight. Did you get the pigeon? No, I ain't got it. Did you get the pigeon? No. How about you? Well, search me. That's what I aim to do. All right, gentlemen, hey. the show's over. Start reaching for the raptor. Just you and Christ take care of this end while I get their guns. Now, you heard what the professor says. Keep the weight off your feet. Come on, you hombres. Line up over here. Hurry up. Against that wall. You and Christ got your horses saddled? Yep. We had a notion we'd be needing them. Well, let them get going while I stay here and visit a while. Neither you nor them two phony stage robbers can get out of this valley alive. Well, anyhow, we can have a lot of fun at trying. Let's take the care of him. Come on, get your guns. Hi, up, man. We got to get to the pass ahead of the law. to go. The horses the doctor promised us are waiting outside the secret entrance. I had about decided that nothing was going to happen when Corrigan and King came running out of the saloon. They got on their horses and rode toward the pass as if the devil was after them. Pretty soon, Gray and the others followed suit. All headed toward the pass? Yes, but the way they headed seemed unusual. Well, anyway, when they get back to the valley, they'll find their nest has been robbed. Come on, let's get to it. Let's go this way and get above the guards at the pass.
They've got the advantage. We haven't got a Chinaman's chance. Well, what happened to you? I don't remember clear. Somebody crowned me. Here, sit down. No, it's a nasty cut, but it'll be all right. Here's where we begin. Jim, see if you can find me a sledgehammer. to prove what we've been sure of right along. The serial numbers make them part of the same batch of greenbacks we found in Brandon's cash box. It's too late to get to our horses. They're already in town. <laughs> I wonder where them horses come from. Boys. Come on, fellas. Well, from the marshal, you were able to finish the job without any more help. I'm not quite finished yet, boys. I've got to ride in and down and get the leader of this gang, the real brains of the outfit. Maybe you've heard of him. The name is Jim Brandon. Brandon? Brandon? You mean to say he's the whip? Oh, no, there's nothing wrong with the whip. In fact, I wouldn't be making this arrest if it wasn't for the evidence dug up by the whip. Well, who is the whip? Well, if you're really anxious to know, take a look in the saloon. Well, we certainly will. Come on, Craig. You won't have to wait for me either. Six, one, one, four, one. Fellas, I want you to meet my, I mean our very good friend, and Philip Pinkerton, Miss Savvy, alias the whip. I don't blame you for being so dumbfounded. <laughs> I guess we all had each other figured out wrong. Well, but what I can't understand... Well, you see, my men and I were only trying to get back the land and money that Brandon swindled from us. This was the only way we could go about it until you three came in. I also found out where she disappeared to that night. Seems like they had a secret cave entrance into that valley where they hid out. Can you imagine that? Oh, that's all past and forgotten. From now on, we have to think about the future. What we need here are men like you. Good, honest men that'll marry and settle down here. You know, that's a good idea. I've been thinking about that. Well, so have I. You know, it seems to me that this part of Texas has great possibilities. Uh-huh. 
Well, maybe it has, but don't you think it's about time we was moseying along? Well, what for? It's about time we're settling down. Oh, sure it is, Alibi. Now you're cooking over a campfire, and this is a place to do it. Now, wait a minute. You fellas really think you could settle down? Well, no. Uh, Why, there's one of your pigeons, Alibi. What is it, Alibi? What's it say? Oh, it's from Ben Morgan's wife up north. She says that ever since Ben refused to give in to some crooks while well, he's been missing, she wants us to come up there and help her and the kids. Well, maybe we'd better forget about settling down for the time being. Sure, you can't let a pal down when he's in trouble. You understand, don't you, Ann? Of course I do. I'd be disappointed in you if you didn't go. But hurry back. Oh, don't worry. We'll be back real soon. Go along, Ann. I'll be seeing you. Bye, Ann. How could Ben Morgan's wife be writing to you? I just remembered Ben isn't married. Yeah, come on now. Come clean, Alibi. Who wrote that note? Oh, the note. Yeah, the note. Well, I guess I did. I had to. The whip, I mean Ann, just about had you two hombres hooked. No, sirree. <laughs> well, you can't settle down and bust up the range busters. Well, we got too much work to do. Come on, we're riding. You and your messages. Well, I'll be seeing you, folks. 